Hey everyone, this is Ben with colonergicurticaria.net and in this video I'm going to talk a little bit about what causes colonergic urticaria. Now this is a really frustrating thing for a lot of people because it's really hard having this disorder and just not really knowing what's happening in your body. You know, why did you develop it? Why did I develop it? And you know, that question can just about drive you crazy sometimes, it almost drove me crazy. And I would spend a lot of time trying to research and ponder. I would you know, scan the internet all the time looking for a new article, anything that could just tell me something about this disorder when I had it. And um, so in this video, I'm just gonna cover some of the things I've kind of found throughout the years, some of the things I've seen people report on the forum, some of my own ideas. I'll just begin by saying that nobody really knows what causes this. There's been uh, some research, but most of the research they might try to associate it with something or categorize it, but I don't think anybody really knows what causes it. I know I don't know what causes it. Uh, I know that my diet has an effect. I don't know the exact mechanism or how exactly my diet translates into this disorder, but I know that it has an effect on it. And um, so I'll just briefly begin to cover these. Uh, first of all, as I mentioned in a previous video, researchers have kind of divided up into subsets and this doesn't really tell you why cholinergic urticaria develops it just kind of they just kind of have looked at certain individuals in a research study and they've said okay we think these people have an allergy to sweat serum we think these people have acquired hypohydrosis with it we think these people maybe have a poral occlusion which is like a blockage of the sweat glands and we think these people they're just idiopathic we don't know what's causing theirs so that's four divisions that one research study kind of divided uh, subtypes of cholinergic urticaria suffers into. Um, and those are interesting. You know, I've read articles where they've done an actual study where they, they would obstruct the sweat glands using like some kind of a plastic film. And when they did that, people would get similar symptoms to what individuals have with cholinergic urticaria. But I'm hesitant to say that everyone that has this has a sweat gland obstruction because other studies have contradicted that one and they've actually went in and looked at the sweat gland and the sweat gland looked fine. So it's kind of difficult to say. Um, what's interesting to note is that there are some disorders that can mimic cholinergic urticaria symptoms, such as tinea versicolor, that's a fungus that can get on your skin and the fungus kind of eats away at your uh, outer pigmentation area and that can call and it can kind of block the pores and that can cause kind of itching and prickling when you get hot i thought i had that at one point I actually tried to treat myself for it a common treatment for that is to take selsun blue which is over counter uh, shampoo and you rub it all over your skin i did that um it really didn't do anything except it made me look like the incredible hulk because i was kind of greenish blue color sort of <laughs> a skinny version of course and um so i tried that and miliaria rubra, that's another uh, disorder. That's where you get bacteria blockage in your pores and that can cause a kind of stinging and prickling too. I actually had a course of antibiotics at one point which is used to treat miliaria rubra and I, I thought, you know, why not? I actually had an ear infection so I got some antibiotics and that didn't help at all with the hives. So I've had antibiotics, I've tried different ways to clear pores. I've scrubbed my skin, applied like an acid type thing to it to try to clean out the pores. That actually made my hives worse, believe it or not. So some people, it could be a poral occlusion that's causing it, but you know, I don't think that's probably true for many people. I, I know it wasn't true in my case. Another uh, researchers found that uh, there could be a defect in the sweat gland junction, like an actual physical defect. But again, like I said, some other studies have contradicted that and they've looked at sweat glands of individuals with coronary degree carry it and they look fine. Um, researchers Beto, Sawada, and Tokura, I hope I'm not butchering their names, um, they did an interesting study and they suggested that what happens is that the acetylcholine, when it's released, when the neurotransmitter is released right at the sweat gland area, that the sweat gland and won't completely absorb it in individuals with cholinergic urticaria and there's sort of an excess release of it and that excess release isn't completely absorbed and that causes the breakdown of the uh, mast cells which releases histamine and causes the itching. The only thing I would say about that, I think it's interesting, I don't know, I'm not sure why it would kind of come and go in individuals. It seems like that would be sort of a consistent problem. Um, so I don't know, it's an interesting study. Sometimes cholinergic urticaria is associated with malignancy, which is cancer. Um, there's been a couple of cases like a leukemia or something. 
it's really rare if you have this you know don't freak out you probably don't have cancer you can always get a checkup if you're not sure get some blood work done and so forth but that has rarely been associated with a with a cause and when the person received chemotherapy their coroners are going to carry it went away so another interesting study i found once upon a time was a, a female had a iud that was made out of copper and that's a contraceptive device that's inserted into the um uterine wall i think is how that works and uh when they removed it her hives went away so apparently she had a copper sensitivity i remember a long time ago on the internet i found a guy's blog who had cancer and whenever he got chemotherapy that chemotherapy seemed to cause his colon or to carry a symptom so it changed something in his body and he got that now i never could find that blog anymore and i've wanted to you know try to track that down i've entered i spent like half a day one time just entering a bunch of keyword phrases trying to find it i don't think it exists anymore on the internet that was several years ago so vitamin d is another thing or vitamin deficiency that possibly could cause it there have been people who have a couple of people have reported that once they began taking vitamin d their hives kind of cleared up a lot of people on the forums tried it i've tried vitamin d and a lot of people don't see a remission of their hives so it may not be the cause for everyone vitamin d is a hormone actually that does regulate a lot of uh, genes so there's a possibility that some of your genetics could change if in the absence of proper vitamin d levels so i don't know if that's a major cause for most people but it could be a cause for some some people have talked about a hormone imbalance you know whether they became pregnant or maybe some were taking uh, birth control pills or taking steroid like anabolic steroids or maybe have low thyroid hormones any of those things possibly could cause it but you know it's hard to say with certainty a couple of people reported that they had a thyroid issue and when they got their thyroid levels back up then it seemed to make their hives get better um, at the same time i've had my thyroid check it's fine i know a lot of people have had theirs checked and it's fine so it doesn't seem like a widespread cause for cholinergic urticaria but it could be different you know there may be different causes for different people it's, it's really hard to say i'm just kind of going through a list here of some things that i've seen people say or i've read online or so and so forth so autoimmune it could be an autoimmune type thing where you either have another autoimmune condition or your body for some reason something in your sweat it recognizes that as an invader and your immune system just uh, you know goes haywire every time you try to sweat because it thinks that there's some foreign substance in your body I've talked already about the fungal thing could be a fungal infection that caused it like tinea versa color but in most cases those are diseases that just kind of mimic the cholinergic urticaria symptoms and they don't actually seem to cause cholinergic urticaria exactly um, some people have hinted that maybe there's a genetic link there's been i think a, at least two or three people who have had family members that also had this so it's possible that there could be something genetic i don't know anyone in my family who has this at all in fact i only really know aside from the internet i only know one person uh, who has had this condition so i don't know how genetic as, as far as genetics you know it's hard to say because even you know hormone imbalances or thyroid issues could be genetic uh, you could have food allergies and so forth that are genetic so it's hard to say how genetics could be involved but only a couple maybe two or three people have noticed that they've had some family members with this as well uh, there could be a bacterial cause you know I, I thought at one point i read an interesting article you know people that develop ulcers it's often uh, due to a bacteria called h pylori and this particular bacteria can cause widespread inflammation in your body and it, it's they've, they're finding that it's responsible for a lot of strange like allergic hives type disorders sometimes and i have had stomach issues so i thought hey maybe this is it maybe i've got an h pylori infection because when i eat sometimes i get bloated and gas and cramps and stuff and i actually went and had a blood test and it turned out negative so i didn't have that but you know if you have a bacterial infection another thing is some you know some people have hinted like i've said that bacteria can actually clog the pores that it could cause it could like get down in the pores and just kind of clog them up or bacterial waste on your skin could clog the pores again in most cases it seems that um, antibiotics would clear that up and i've taken a course of antibiotics so that doesn't seem to be the cause of mine there could also be an environmental allergy if you have mold in your house if you have 
you know, a bunch of ragweed in your area and pollen and so forth, and you just have an allergy to that, it could inflame your system to the point where maybe that, you know, caused culinary urticaria to develop. It's hard to say, but that's always something you could think of as a possible cause. Food allergies, you know, I think food allergies are the biggest cause of mine, and that's possibly why it caused, and I'll talk for a second on how that may have happened, but, you know, I definitely encourage people to take some time looking at your diet, maybe try one of those allergy elimination diets, see if it works for you. I always recommend you talk to a doctor first to be safe before you try any kind of new diet or exercise program or anything, but how I think that could have a role in it is because sometimes your body you know, if you have like a certain food intolerance or, you know, maybe it's just something about your genetics, I don't know, but you can eat certain foods and your body just don't break them down properly. An example would be, say you have lactose intolerance. When you eat, when you drink milk or eat dairy foods, your body can't break down that sugar and it can cause you all kinds of stomach symptoms and you can take a, you know, lacto lactose enzyme and to help you break that down. But Another example is gout. Gout is a disorder where people will develop uh, high levels of uric acid in their body, and this can crystallize in their joints, and they can get really bad inflammation and become red, swollen in their joints, and it's because their body just doesn't seem to break that down, or it just builds up to excess levels in their body. And I kind of think something like that may be involved with coronary urticaria. Like, maybe my body can't break a certain chemical down, when I eat just a regular diet, something that's in all these other foods that I can't eat, and you know, we eat dairy and so forth, and maybe something builds up in my diet or in my body, and maybe it changes a protein that's right around the sweat glands or something, or it changes the level of acetylcholine released or something like that. I'm not sure, but I think maybe something along those lines is what causes it for me, and you know. Food allergies may, other people may not have nothing to do with food allergies, I don't know. I'm just trying to lay some things out there that may help you. So that's that's just kind of the, a list of some causes of potential things that may be why it develops in the first place. I know that's that may not be very helpful. It's sort of frustrating because I wish I could tell you this is what causes it, this is why it develops, but we really don't know. And I don't think any of the researchers really know, even though they've had some interesting studies and I'm always thankful that they do take the time to study it. So in the next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about some of the treatments that are available for this disorder. I'm going to talk about some of the ones I've tried. I've tried a lot of different things over the years to try to make my symptoms go away. So make sure to stay tuned for that video. And thank you so much for watching and God bless.